Okay, get ready for a tiny sensor rant. I was listening to This Week in Photo podcast that I often listen to, and I listen to a bunch of other photography podcasts and so on. And invariably, they get around to talking about the iPhone and how great a camera it has and how it's getting so good that it's like a professional camera. And today they were talking about RAW files are going to be supported, DNG files are going to be supported in the new operating system, iOS 10, I guess it's going to be called, and how great that is and how you'll be able to do all of this with the, with the photos and so on and so forth. Reality check. These phones have tiny little sensors in them. The iPhone has a tiny little sensor. It might be the best tiny little sensor on the planet. And by the way, it also has a tiny little lens. And you can only do so much. They suck. Tiny sensors suck. They're no damn good. The reason that they use them in these phones is because they're tiny and the phones are thin and tiny. The space they have to put the camera in there is, is very limited. They don't do it because it's a better choice. Otherwise, pro cameras would have, guess what, tiny little sensors in them. And then, of course, they, these guys, when the Micro Four Thirds crave came around and these guys all jumped on the bandwagon, Micro Four Thirds, oh, they're small and lightweight and all of this. And it's a smaller sensor than an APS-C size sensor. It's in between the one inch sensor and the APS-C size sensor. And I got a lot of flack for saying that a particular Panasonic camera that was coming out wasn't going to be any good because it had the small sensor in it. I have the FZ-1000, which has the one inch sensor in it and does a pretty good job for 4K video. I have the RX-100 Mark IV, has the one inch sensor in it, does a pretty good job for 4K video. I wouldn't use either one of those for still photos. The photos come out kind of soft because that sensor is just not big enough. And the, the, they cram a ton of, of pixels on there to say it's 20 megapixels or whatever, but it's still a small sensor. And, and so there's limitations when you get these tiny sensors. They just don't work very well. This entire video is being shot in 4K with decent room lighting, two big windows there with, with indirect uh, window light coming in. And I shoot a lot of videos here, and normally I don't use the iPhone because even with this much light, the video is kind of soft and the quality is not there. It doesn't equal my RX100 Mark IV. It certainly doesn't equal my A7S Mark II with the full frame sensor doesn't even come close. And then we're not even getting into the fact that you don't have a zoom, you can't zoom in, you can't change lenses and all that. Forget about that. Just take that out of the equation. And let's say we're using a fixed focal length. These things are garbage compared to a real camera. Even a Micro Four Thirds camera is going to take much better photos. And Micro Four Thirds isn't the greatest. So if you think sensor size doesn't matter, uh, you're just buying into a bill, bill of goods. I mean, you just are not paying attention. It does matter. And for example, the A7S Mark II that I bought that I use to cover events, it only has 12 megapixels on that nice big full frame sensor. It's got 12 megapixels. So guess what? It does pretty good in low light. Now, it doesn't do near as good as a lot, a lot of people say it does. A lot of people say, you know, you can shoot it 26,000 ISO or whatever, you know, and it's clean and all this. No, 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 no. You, you're going to pick up a stop or two over like my Nikon D700 that was also 12 megapixels that I retired after like seven years of use. You're going to pick up a, a stop or two. So you pick up enough low light performance so that I can use an F4 lens instead of an F2.8, which that is actually a big gain because the F4 lens is smaller and lighter weight and it has the stabilization built in and all that. And so it keeps that whole package relatively compact. Whereas if I had an F2.8 lens on there, it would be much bulkier. They just came out with the F2.8 glass, which by the way, if you're shooting with an A7S Mark II, I don't think you need, because I think you can shoot with the 24 to 70 F4, you can shoot nice portraits, still get a nice shallow depth of field F4. And then the 70 to 200 F4 lens, again, lighter weight with stabilization built in, that takes very nice portraits. So I don't think you really need to go to the F2.8 glass if you're shooting with an A7S Mark II. 
just because you did pick up a couple of stops in low light performance uh, with that camera. Now, getting back to the tiny sensors, and I know this is a long rant here, but those that think that they can take great photos with an iPhone, just because you occasionally see some good photos that were supposedly taken with an iPhone, of course they were taken in ideal light and you know ideal circumstances and so on and so forth, but the bottom line is you're going to struggle to get photos that are not on the soft side with an iPhone. And same thing with video. I did a lot of testing when this came first came out with the 4K video and I just I couldn't get it to be sharp. You be the judge. Look at this video right now. See how sharp it is. Of course with me being the subject I should thank it for not being sharp. You know, a little bit soft probably helps me. But the bottom line is it is not as sharp as my RX100 Mark IV with the one inch sensor. It's not as sharp as my FC1000 that also has the one inch sensor. And it's not as sharp as my A7S Mark II. So A7S, yeah, II. Um, so it just don't feed into that. If, if you hear these, these people talking about how great cell phones have gotten and how great the photos are, Bottom line is I appreciate the fact that everybody's out there shooting events with, with phones and so forth because that makes my event photos stand out as something special and because all theirs look like crap and then mine are halfway decent. Mine aren't great by any means but they're halfway decent and you compare halfway decent to crap and, and so there's that, that's what you have. But um, don't, don't think that the 4K video out of these anything with a tiny sensor. When I say tiny, I'm saying below one inch sensor. These one slash two dot three sensors or whatever that a lot of the handy cams have and so forth. Any of those smaller sensors and of course the sensors that are in the phones. Don't think that you're going to get sharp photos or sharp video out of them. You're not. Most of the content they're going to generate is going to be marginal at best and a lot of it is going to be crap. So Tiny sensors, repeat after me, tiny sensors suck. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.